Ile de France is the region of Paris. Uh, it's the historical uh, name of the region, uh, which is at the origin of the French kingdom. Uh, that's all. <laughs> I'm going to speak about uh, gypsum plaster. Uh, I read the poem in the title just plaster, but uh, because I forgot gypsum. <laughs> Uh, that means it's not just uh, plaster as um, as a render or just uh, um, uh, glue uh, for constructing, but uh, also all uh, you can do with gypsum. Gypsum is the stone, uh, a rock, uh, which we, go, we are going to see. Ah. So, uh, <coughs> The use, uses of uh, gypsum, gypsum plaster are very traditional in the region and uh, they have been studied uh, mostly uh, from the 1970s before. Uh, it was very well known because very uh, usual and so uh, it wasn't uh, subject for uh, archaeologists or technical history. So it was a little bit uh, forgot, forgotten by, uh, by the studies until the, the end the, the 1970s. But uh, during the 70s and the 80s, uh, most of bibliography uh, was produced, uh, kept a very straight diffusion, uh, not, very, uh, not very large. And it was uh, re forgotten uh, during the 90s uh, because of the different ways of uh, development of uh, preventive archaeology. Uh, it was not a subject uh, for 10 years. And, uh, and in the 2000s, the subject came back uh, with the action of uh, the Museum of Cormeillon Parisi, which, is, which was a museum of the quarry, quarry and uh, production factory of plaster, uh, then which beca became uh, like an information re center uh, for the, the plaster in, uh, in the region. And also the GRPA, which is an association, uh, made uh, several colloquium. Uh, which are published and uh, are now new references on, the, on this material. And from the 2005 uh, years, uh, new, new works about, uh, new archaeological works about the plaster uh, came on the scene. Uh, mine, my thesis. <laughs> And uh, also, uh, what uh, uh, the thesis of an architect, which uh, Steph Tiffany uh, Le Dantec, which, which uh, who worked about uh, plaster render, and uh, also different actions of uh, the GRPA, and <coughs> uh, a recent publication of the Center of Research of the Monument History, the Monument Historic. Centre de recherche des monuments historiques, uh, which is called Plâtre, Sol et Couvrement, uh, which is a big study about the uses of plaster uh, on the national uh, French territory. Uh, then, okay, uh, the plaster is comes from uh, gypsum. Gypsum is a, a rock, uh, a stone uh, from of the tertiary uh, era around uh, three, uh, no, uh, 38 million years ago, uh, which was deposited uh, in a lagunary uh, basin of Paris. It comes from a secondary dissolution of gypsum, uh, more ancient from the Trias uh, in, the, in the region of Lorraine, which were uh, dissolved and uh, Went down, went down, went down uh, by the rivers and uh, stopped in the lagunary uh, middle of uh, the basin of Paris. And then 
uh, made a uh, stratigraphy high from around uh, 50 meters, 50 meters high. Uh, that means uh, this stratigraphy is made of uh, a stone, a stone level, a stone, uh, a level of uh, clay, uh, lime clay, uh, which is called marne, another stone level, and so on, uh, like that. Uh, around 15 meters of uh, deep or high. Uh, it's now um, uh, accessible uh, by uh, Testimony Hills around Paris, uh, we, in which we can, uh, in which are today, uh, nowadays, still queries in, uh, in functionment. In, in if we look a uh, map of the region, uh, Paris is here, in the, um, around uh, 1740. Uh, Paris is here, and uh, you can see all the little red stars are uh, quarries of gypsum. <coughs> uh, uh, around 45 on the map, on this map. At the same time, if we cross with different maps of the same moment, we can see, we can have uh, uh, more details and see that uh, there are places where uh, the, the hills were uh, just made by successive quarries, uh, uh, one after the other. Um, as we have been told this, this morning, uh, uh, there are two uh, extraction modes uh, of uh, this uh, stone one in open air and uh, one in uh, underground. The most uh, recognized, uh, quite historical extraction is very badly re recognized because uh, the theoretical, what would say uh, engineers in the 19th century who written about uh, the production uh, say that uh, the best way to exploit uh, gypsum is first of all to make a discovered quarry and when the discovered quarry uh, begins to be too expensive to be exploited then enter inside the hill. <coughs> well, uh, we know, uh, we know as we have seen on the previous slide, uh, lots of quarries, but archaeologically, archaeologically, we know uh, very few, uh, just two uh, open air quarries uh, which have been uh, uh, recognized. One in 1988 and the other in 1984. In Shell, this is this one, which is dated of the 12th century, and uh, this one in Villiadon, it was in, uh, uh, in the border of. Uh, of a, a road, uh, which uh, is dated of the 14th century. And that's all, uh, because uh, all the quarries we could uh, re recognize on, the, on maps, on historical maps, uh, have been exploited uh, more and more, and uh, after recovered. Uh, is to say that, uh, sorry, all this space is today uh, urbanized at 100% uh, percent. So it's uh, near near impossible to to see uh, the ancient quarries. Well, uh, gypsum is uh, a rock, uh, a natural rock, which is uh, dehydrated cal calcium sulfate, uh, and uh, it can be uh, heated around uh, one, 120 degrees, I've written <laughs> in the slide, uh, and it makes evaporation of the crystallization water of the rock. And then uh, it makes, uh, a, 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 from 70% uh, of uh, deshydratation, it makes uh, a new chemical, uh, a new chemical product. Uh, which is called basalite by chemist, chemist uh, not by me. It's also plaster. <laughs> uh, 
uh, which uh, can be rehydrated uh, when you put the water on it. It makes uh, <coughs> it makes a setting and it becomes hard again. It makes a, a new crystallization. No. We, we, we. And this process is uh, renewable. You can make plaster, and uh, when you and build something, and when you have to change part of your building, break a wall, take the plaster, cook it another time, and do more plaster. That's uh, the industrial uh, exploitation I discovered this uh, five years ago or ten years ago. <laughs> What a waste. Uh, that's the principle, and with that we can do uh, all every sort uh, of things. So uh, also uh, to deshydrate uh, the stone, uh, we, we need ovens, kilns. Uh, as as for the quarries, uh, the kilns are very bad known. Uh, Nowadays, I know only on the region uh, only four kilns uh, which have, have been seen uh, by archaeologists. The first one, Dogma, uh, is dated of the 7th century. It's located in the middle of a, a cemetery, a Merovingian cemetery, and it probably served to make the plaster for a sarcophagus. The other one, uh, the second one, is uh, in Saint Martin du Quatre, in the a castle, in the moat uh, trench uh, of the castle, which was partially destroyed and uh, remodeled, re remade. And uh, in the moat, the moat trench, we can find also the plaster which was uh, broke, broke, broken down, and. Uh, and a, a little kiln uh, to, to produce plaster. Another one in Sarcelles is one same sort of, uh, of kiln. It, was, it is associated, associated to uh, the construction of the village houses uh, from the 14th century. Uh, the better studied, uh, studied uh, kiln is uh, the Sarcelles one because it's the, the more uh, recent. Uh, we could see that it served uh, three times uh, success successively. And we can uh, imagine that with a system like that, uh, so the mounting of gypsum and fire on the, on the, uh, on, on the, the stone, uh, it could have cooked uh, around three cubic meters uh, of gypsum at one time. So that means if he worked three times, he may have produced uh, nine met cubic, meter, cubic meters of uh, plaster. The last uh, trace of uh, kiln is known in Villiers Adam, but it's not the, the kiln itself, it's just traces of the the waste of the the, the kids. so, so uh, yeah. ashes and, uh, and and so on. The most developed uh, way to cook uh, gypsum until the 1970 uh, keeps uh, this this type of of kilns, which is called fourculé. Uh, uh, it's very simple. Three, three, three walls uh, make uh, make something to uh, to to cut the the, the wind, <laughs> and inside uh, is is put all the gypsum with uh, possible building a little arches to to put the compass under the, the charge and go on. This type of uh, kilns have, have, have worked in France, uh, in the region of Paris, until the 1950s. Uh, it's still used today, uh, nowadays, for example, in Spain, uh, 
and uh, more more uh, less less perfect perfectly perfectedly <laughs> Uh, still used in Iran also uh, nowadays. I have no images, I'm sorry. <coughs> and then uh, with the cooked oh woo! <laughs> with the cooked uh, gypsum, you can produce sarcophagus. So uh, Ile de France is a, a very big uh, product, uh, producer of sarcophagi. Uh, which we know now uh, better with uh, studying of the decoration of uh, the, the cubes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we can also uh, funerary use uh, are still uh, important until, until modern times because of uh, constructed uh, by masonry uh, tombs. I put medieval, but uh, it's still used in the 18th century. And uh, obviously, uh, construction, uh, construction, uh, use of the the stone to make the walls, but also to make bricks or uh, every sort of uh, columns, capitals, or, uh, or roof tiles, and also stuccos from antiquity to uh, the modern period. So. Uh, Lots of examples. Uh, this was antiquity. Uh, this is uh, early Middle Ages. Uh, several modes, constructing modes, uh, stuccos, also and uh, and so on. Examples of stuccos and uh, still for the uh, construction in late uh, medieval houses, uh, different sort of houses. We can see a reconstruction here of uh, 14th, uh, 15th century uh, houses in Tremble of France. Uh, here we can see a house of the 17th uh, in the Pierre Fitte, uh, Paris. Uh, that's the beginning of the 19th century. And uh, Gonesse in, in 19th century. And that's a photograph of the beginning of the 20th century. <coughs> the activity of uh, mason of yes of masonry is uh, the activity of uh, plastering uh, in Ile de France from middle middle ages to the industrialization industrialization of uh, production plaster uh, becomes very late uh, because of uh, the price it costs there are lots of things to say <laughs> Uh, so, uh, in the example, we can find uh, uh, what's in, is, what is interesting is to see uh, in an excavation the demolition uh, fragments to uh, understand the morphology of the buildings. For example, roof cementation, for example, chimneys or uh, windows, posts. And this is uh, particularly interesting because of the graffitos. Uh, also uh, cornices to support the roof and uh, put away the rain and water and also windows, dressery, floors, uh, ceilings, of course, uh, drain pipes uh, and so on. Uh, decora decoration of interior, uh, exterior, uh, exterior of the buildings this is a good example, it's Saint Martin de Tertre, uh, in which we found these fragments and these fragments, which are uh, little windows of uh, around 30 centimeters wide, and uh, the external decoration uh, like that, uh, which were in the 13th century. It's, it's typical Romanic construction. Uh, which in the 13th century were uh, broken to uh, enlarge the, the 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 windows. In the same in the same deposit, we found this uh, fragments of the windows and the fragments of the internal decoration, uh, render plaster painted painted render plaster. 
so on, all the declination of the uh, of the internal decoration, the statues too, and blah blah blah. <laughs> Uh, plaster is also used in uh, arch molding to uh, make um, uh, plus léger, <laughs> less heavy <laughs> the architecture. Yes, I finish now. <laughs> I finish with uh, modern examples. Uh, if you know Paris, uh, you have to go to a Place des Vosges because it's one of the most uh, most uh, conserved uh, <coughs> place where uh, plaster is used. And thank you. <laughs>